Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now, the GPD win. I have wanted one for so long, yet I've never taken the plunge because they're so expensive. Even with the release of the second model, the GPD Win 2, I still couldn't quite find myself purchasing one as they were often retailing for well over two, three hundred pounds here in the UK. That all changed today when my temptation got the better of me and I purchased this, the cheapest GPD win I could find on eBay. As you can see here, it looks very much like a Nintendo 3DS XL, only it features Windows 10, a full gamepad controller set up here with the triggers on the top, as well as a QWERTY keyboard, which admittedly is rather awkward to use. Now the successor, the GPD Win 2, features a lot more power under the hood, but this one comes with an Intel Atom X7Z8700, 4 gigs of DDR3 RAM and 64 gigs of internal storage. First I want to see if this one actually works as it should, and I want to talk about whether or not it's worth buying. They are still quite expensive, and when you consider the specifications inside, well they don't sound all that powerful. But the thing is, there's nothing quite like this on the market. Sure, you could put together a more capable gaming PC made up of used parts and have a much better time, I'm sure, but this appeals to a totally different audience. So, let's open it up Oops, and see what it can do. Right then, lads, first of all, I think we should talk about what I got in the box. Of course, we have the GPD win itself. Now, this was purchased on eBay secondhand, so it didn't come with all the original accessories. In fact, it really didn't come with much else other than the cardboard box, an empty box here, and what should include the original earphones. To be honest, I love secondhand hardware, I really do. I will not hesitate in purchasing anything that's been used within reason, but secondhand earphones. I'll probably draw the line there. Anyway, that's all we got in the box, as well as the original instruction manual. Atop the base that houses all the vital components, we have a 5.5 inch 1280 x 720 display, which admittedly isn't fantastic for viewing a full desktop version of Windows 10 on, nor is it ideal for navigating around, though the touchscreen and the analog stick acting as the mouse certainly makes up for this. That was until I tested out my touchscreen and found that the calibration was slightly off, to put it lightly. I'll have to find a way to sort this out, otherwise the touchscreen is going to be unusable. Perhaps that's why it got sold in the first place, but this doesn't seem like an unfixable issue. Either Windows 10 will need reinstalling, or we'll just run a couple of updates and see if that resolves things. I like to list all the faults that I find with secondhand hardware, just so you guys know what to look out for in case these turn out to be common issues. Aesthetically speaking, the GPD is very solid, even if one of the left triggers does feel a little sticky at times, probably through heavy use. The right hinge is also a little wobbly, something I read was a fault from new on some models too. This isn't exactly a new device, so many of you have probably already watched or read reviews beforehand. I purchased one today because I plan to make a few videos on it, exploring its capabilities in 2019 and beyond. I'll be touching on performance, but expect to see a few more uploads over the coming weeks, focusing on different aspects of this device. Firstly though, let's get the basics down. When browsing the web, the quad-core Atom CPU means that things are snappy and responsive. You're getting a fully-fledged desktop experience on a pocket-sized device, and this hasn't changed since launch. As you can see, I visited one of my favourite websites, PC Gamer, and things loaded up within seconds. Any on-site videos will run perfectly too. It's fair to assume that the GPD Win 2 irons out a lot of performance flaws that this original device has gaming-wise. Considering it has beefier specs, though as such a beefier price tag to boot. This one is certainly better suited to older games such as Half-Life 2, which can be configured to run way over 60fps if you use the medium or low settings. In this case I was using high at native 720p and still saw respectable performance. More modern AAA titles will struggle. Grand Theft Auto 4, for example, probably one of the most unoptimised games out there, yet one that's had a recent performance update wasn't much more than a PowerPoint presentation. And the same can be said for GTA 5, 
Although it's a few years old, it is still constantly updated. When it came to testing Bioshock Infinite, I was hitting closer to 30 FPS, albeit with 640x480 resolution, which in all honesty didn't look at all bad on this small display. I captured most of this footage externally using an Avamedia Gamer Mini. Far Cry 2, despite some heavy slowdown, even managed a 30 FPS average during the benchmark run. These aren't exactly results that pave the way for hopeful frame rates in the newest games, but I'm sure we should be able to use some tweaks or mods to help us out. Emulation is where this thing shines though. I tested what is the only PSP game left in my collection, Burnout Legends, and it ran just fine using the PPSSPP emulator. With that said, if portable emulation is a priority, you might want to look into the cheaper GPD XD, the Android version of this device. That is if you don't mind sacrificing the whole Windows part. So far I'm having a great time with the GPD Win. There's still a thriving community out there for it and I'm looking forward to compiling a long list of titles that I find run well on it, as well as messing around with any tweaks. Let me know what you want me to try out because I'll be keeping this for the foreseeable future and trying to run a few more modern releases on it very soon. For now though, I'm going to leave it there because there is so much to cover, I don't want to try and cram it all into one video. If you enjoyed this one, leave a like on it, leave a dislike if you didn't, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already, and hopefully I'll see you all in the next one.